Hello and welcome to all of you. Today I would like to bring your attention to a pandemic that was much more deadly than any other you can think of. A plague that almost destroyed an entire continent, wiping out the majority of its population. Extremely contagious and able to kill in seconds. Don't worry, this example is taken from a video game called World of Warcraft. If I am mentioning this example, it is because this is a fascinating scenario on which several scientific papers have been written, drawing parallels with real-life situations and valuable lessons for the current crisis. Everything started when Blizzard, the video game editor, released a new, very powerful boss called Hakkar the South Layer. This boss was only accessible to high level players, and players needed to reach a faraway dungeon to meet with Hakkar the South Layer. Please just stop this thing with the music, will you? But that is not everything. Hakkar got a strong power called Corrupted Blood. Oh come on guys! This effect that players call a debuff is a temporary condition that would inflict damages every 2 seconds. The characteristic of this effect is that it could spread to other players if they stood close enough to each other, just like a real virus. After 10 seconds were done, or players finished the boss battle, the effect was supposed to end. Only it didn't, because of a loophole. First, characters could teleport to different locations, but there is more to the story. Hunter characters can summon and dismiss pets to fight at the side at will. Now these pets could also get corrupted blood. They were sometimes dismissed during the fight, and when the players were back in the cities, they would summon them again. And soon, these pets spurred the corrupted blood outbreak. Interestingly, this is typical of what scientists call a zoonotic disease. For instance, the bacteria that cause the Black Death, Yersinia pestis, maintain their existence in a cycle involving rodents and their fleas. Within hours, cities started to be filled with corpses. The population abandoned urban areas to rush to the countryside. Now, several important lessons for epidemiologists can be drawn from what happened next. A scientific paper published in the reputable journal The Lancet was called The Untapped Potential of Virtual Game Worlds to Shed Light on Real-World Epidemics. The authors made a striking observation. Although highly contagious, the disease in World of Warcraft may very well have run its course naturally in a very short period of time. To the game's powerful players, the disease was no more threatening than the common cold in a healthy adult. Less powerful characters died very quickly from its effects. Why then did it become so deadly? The reason is healthy carriers. In particular, non-playable characters or NPCs like the ones who offer your quest are often very powerful. What no one saw coming was that they could also catch a disease, spreading it to whoever came in contact with them. In other words, for a disease to spread well, the reservoir system needs individuals that can carry it long enough. This is a valuable lesson for these times, as it was shown, for instance, that children's role in spreading the coronavirus was higher than expected. According to researchers, pretty much like high-level players, their mortality rate is low and they can carry a high viral load. Blizzard tried to impose quarantine measures, isolating infected players from as yet non-infected players. But the strategy failed big time because of the most important element in a crisis, human behavior. From the start of the outbreak, several behaviors could be observed. First, the frontline healers. They tried to help others, but unfortunately, this resulted in them contracting the disease or keeping alive people who would then spread the disease. Many players did not follow the restrictions, so some players acted like vigilantes, trying to force others into quarantine. Someone set up an armed roadblock against some construction workers from New Jersey. The residents thought since they were from New Jersey, they might have coronavirus. Many players, however, became basic spreaders out of curiosity, carelessness, or mere opposition. If I get corona, I get corona. At the end of the day, I'm not going to let it stop me from partying. Because you're wearing a mask out of stupidity and you're further pushing the agenda. And the agenda is the deep state. A fascinating category of behaviors is the griefers or the apocalypse bringers. These individuals intentionally try to spread the disease. 
Now, this is supposed to be an evidence that video games are not a perfect analogy of what happens in the real world. Little did we know that such behaviors, although marginal, appeared during the coronavirus crisis. She intentionally coughed on a nurse at an urgent care facility. But these individuals may not have been the worst ones. La crème. A last group of individuals tried to take advantage of the situation, selling fake potions or tips against the debuff. Such opportunist behaviors are of course observed during a real sanitary crisis. During the COVID-19 crisis, many companies have been selling products like hand sanitizers or face masks at a ridiculously high price. Many similar examples can come to mind, the worst being probably Martin Shkreli, the CEO of a pharmaceutical company who raised the price of a drug used by AIDS and cancer patients by a factor of 56. To be clear, the corrupted blood does not teach us scientifically how people behave in real outbreaks, nor did it predict what would happen with the coronavirus, but it provides us with very valuable insights. First, even in a highly controlled environment like a video game, it is impossible to predict the development of an outbreak because of the complexity and the number of actors in the system. Second, human reactions were not homogeneous, often unexpected and proved decisive in the evolution of a crisis. Third, on the one hand, the global strategy failed, but on the other hand, small-scale responses developed locally by players could be effective. During the corona times, everyday heroes and small-scale initiatives have concretely improved the situation. And they're going out each week to be with these people and making a real difference and combating loneliness and social isolation. Last but not least, the crisis actually strengthened the community of players. After the panic, the reaction was globally positive. It brought players together and created long-lasting memories. Historians have revealed a forgotten truth. Contrarily to common beliefs, pandemics often tend to bring communities together. We know that the Black Death of 1347 unleashed mass violence against Jews, clerics and beggars. But we often forget that pandemics like the Great Influenza of 1918, despite high mortality rates, saw huge waves of self-sacrifice and mobilization from volunteers. In the end, the only way for the developers of World of Warcraft to stop the epidemic was to take univocal, coordinated worldwide action. In other words, they had no choice but to reset the server. Obviously, we cannot do that, so we need to be able to identify beforehand where the issues may arise. In an article published in Nature Human Behavior, scientists have tried to explore how we can harness the feeling of collective belonging and make sure people cooperate rather than compete in a situation of crisis. They mention an interesting finding. The very notion of panic can be actively harmful. New stories that employ the language of panic often create the very phenomena that they purport to condemn. So are we in the media potentially making things worse? Ironically enough, portraying the panic can cause it as a form of self-fulfilling prophecy. It is a common trend. Before the coronavirus, historian Patrick Wallace and linguist Bridget Nerlich have shown that the SARS was mostly described as a killer. How then can you bring people to cooperate? The authors of the first article suggest five elements. One, emphasize benefits to the recipients. Two, focus on protecting others. Three, align with the recipient's moral values. Four, appeal to social consensus or scientific norms. And five, highlight the prospect of social group approval. Coordination is required to align individual and collective interests. And this is another domain where video games can teach us many lessons. Remember, heroes, fear is your greatest enemy in these befouled halls. Voila, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and that you learned real lessons from this virtual epidemic. If you would like me to do more videos like this one, please let me know in the comments. And as usual, you can hit the notification bell. Thank you so much for your attention and see you next time.